and it's just forward and back for the clicker. Yeah. Yes, that's you could also. There's also a laser pointer. Oh. Okay. okay uh, hi everyone. Um, Hello. Yeah. So Hello. I'm supposed to be the purported uh, digital game video game expert. <laughs> In my collective, no I'll try my best. Do you say my um, so I'm from a company called Lambda Me. Um, our flagship game was a mobile uh, game, a city builder, where you are in space, trying to recreate humanity from clones that you mix and match, and try and discover jobs for them. Right? I, I don't really need to go too far into the game. Just well, that's who we are. Um, I think, given what we've seen from the previous talks. I hope my talk will be a bit of a companion piece to what Jedediah and Russell share. So Jedediah seems to me to be looking at, you know, thinking about the player um, and how they're going to be experiencing your game. Russell was very much looking at how do you craft a unique identity as a designer or for your game. I'm going to kind of take a step back a little bit and hopefully, if I'm successful, we get a set of concepts or terms that we can kind of use during our game jam session as ways to communicate and approach the talk, the discussion, right, of how to build a game up from basic elements. Okay, so that's my goal. Um, all right, so for the first part, I'm only going to focus on the game bit. Right, I'm going to leave the video bit aside for a second. And one way we can think about approaching the uh, start of a game is to maybe break it down into these three categories. Some people want to start with a theme, right? Um, and I'll go further into that later, of course. Or a lot of times you see game designers think about genres, right? I, I just want to make a fighting game. I want to make an FPS. I want to make a MOBA, right? It, they start from the genre and then they move on. And finally, there are some people who think first, I just want to make the activity fun. I don't care what the story is yet. I don't know what the characters look like yet. I just want to be able to do this and you know have people have a great fun, uh, time. Right. So those like might be the three general approaches to start. So what are themes like? Right. Um, it could be a setting. A lot of times you can see that, uh, especially um, uh, when gamers uh, talk about the origin of a game, they might say like, I have a world that I've created in my mind. Right? I've imagined it, it's, it's complete, it's replete, and I just want to realize it in all of its different aspects. Right? So maybe it's like a, sorry, uh, so maybe it's like a, you know, a simulation of a underwater scuba diving experience, right? and I have to make that as realistic and complete as possible. Um, it could be a prompt, like if I give the building blocks um, uh, that people need to create whatever they want, what are they going to do? Right. How do I facilitate that creativity? How do I, you know, um, uh, let them express themselves via the toolkit that I've given them? And finally, you know, it could be a question. It could be something gripping to them. All right. So um, for those of you who are not familiar with War of Mine, it's kind of like a survival during wartime. You have to go around and collect tiny little survival kits and tools and decide who's your friend or who's going to be your enemy. It, it, right. So the question here is, what compromises are you willing to make? If you were to be put in a war zone, right? So we could start with you know all of these things, right? Um, uh, in terms of a thematic uh, uh, beginning, right, to a game idea. All right. So next, we go to genre, right? Um, I think this is very common, um, especially when I talk to um, young game designers, right? Often the passion is I just love this genre. I just want to make my version of it or the greatest version of it I can. Right, so you would start with again, a, a, you know, yeah, right, like like that core uh, game experience that everyone knows, everyone loves, and they just want to do something with it. So you could iterate, right? Let's just take the best of what it is, and then keep on refining, keep on refining. So a lot of times, video gamers look at art, right? Graphics. Um, it could also, of course, be the gameplay and the mechanics, right? Can I make the um, range of actions or movements, uh, what I do in the game, richer, blah blah blah. Right. So again, it's just improvement and refinement. Um, of course, there's plenty of room to start evolving. And a very common thing is you know mishmash, right? Separate genres together. Um, you 
put take Tetris, you take Street Fighter, and then you get Puzzle Fighter, right? Uh, so again, another very fertile route when thinking about what to do with genres. And finally, you know, you can subvert it entirely, right? So you, you know, borrowing from us, we talk about uh, non-negotiables. Usually, fighting games non-negotiable balance. But why not create a game or try to create a game when there's no such thing as balance? How do I still make it a fun or engaging and interesting experience by breaking a rule or breaking a convention? Right. So again, um, um, I think this is a very fertile and common way to approach thinking about game design. Um, finally, last thing, right? Uh, mechanics. You know, forget again establish genres. Forget any theme. Nothing lofty. Can I create an activity that is just simply fun to do? And so. When we think about mechanics, uh, hopefully it's useful to look at it in terms of, again, the interface. How do I input my desire, my intention? Um, how do I tell the system that this is my goal or, or my action in it? Um, are my actions meaningful? So, I mean, if you talk about, you know, dance, dance, revolution, <laughs> and I'm stepping on these squares, how do I know this is interesting to do, right? Well, what is it uh, within the system? Why does it have meaning, right? So in a lot of games, uh, they give you all these interfaces, they give you all these things that you can click on, and blah, 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 blah. How do they turn that into something that's actually matters within that system, within the game world, right? And finally, of course, the feedback, right? Um, this is often overlooked, but uh, you need to make sure that your player knows whether they're doing something good or bad. And if we don't have feedback, then you often find very unsatisfactory uh, experiences, right? It's just like, okay, so, so what if you put this thing that I can play with here, and I don't know what it was there for, why did you open it up? Um, I, I'm pretty sure people hold Zelda, right? Breath of the Wild is like the paragon of, don't worry, all these various actions, they will have some sort of meaning you can derive from it. Okay, so, um, from there, how do we express all these things? I guess that's when we, you know, arrive at um, uh, that unique thing that a game can provide you. you know, so, for instance, if I were to distill uh, um, uh, uh, Dark Souls, right? What would I consider to be the hook and the style? I mean, for me, the hook is: Can I bring out the inner masochist? in anyone who plays this game, right? Like, like the, the, I'm gonna make this as painful as possible because that's, right, the, the unique experience I'm gonna have. Um, you could also then uh, focus uh, on the other side of it, which is, you know, uh, again, if you start from mechanics perhaps, right, the experience would be uh, endlessly repayable, repeatable, uh, straightforward, just fun time that doesn't need any sort of arc or grander scheme or intention. Or it could be something like a, you know, very singular, uh, a one-time uh, experience where you just play, you get the story, you get the the, uh, um, you know, the experience of having played it, and you're satisfied and you're done. And finally, of course, that informs your find your game. Um, this sample one is probably suitable for something like Beat Saber, right? It's just do the thing, chill out, because <laughs> you need to recover, and then do the thing again, yeah, and then chill out, right? Um, but of course, more complex games require a lot of other you know, intermediate steps and things like that to keep the player engaged, keep them going through the loop over and over again to explore the world given them. Okay, so that's the game bit, right? Um, what about the video bit? So, if we go into um, the more technical side of it, of course, we have to talk about the tech. Right, like the, the devices, the actual things you use uh, to share input, um, like Jedediah's uh, example about how kids these days only want to just touch screens, right? And who knows what in the future is going to be that new interface? Um, of course, you'd be talking about code, and you'd be talking about how you get the feedback, right? I don't think this is very interesting for us in our purposes of game jam, especially with the scope where we're coming from. We're not going to be trying to make the ultimate ultra HD television screen and that's not, that's not what we're doing. Um, instead, what I kind of want to uh, propose as a way of thinking about what video games or, or what video games can do that is distinct from other media and maybe that's how we draw something useful uh, for our game jam purposes. Um, I propose you know, three lenses. What video games can do in terms of our experience of time, uh, space, and how meaning story that 
tickle. I don't know. Uh, it's some nebulous, but what what the, someone draws up from a video game ultimately, right? Okay. Um, so I uh, uh, have no definition. I'm not pretending this is a definition. Wow. <laughs> I'm so glad that even quantum physicists have no real definition uh, that's uh, universally acceptable yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll just propose this, all right? When we think about time, let's kind of shift away from the clock time, real time. Let's think about it, change, uh, what change is happening, how quickly it's happened, what am I supposed to do with it? So the great thing about video games, hey, we really get to play around with it. This is a game called Brave. So you think about Mario where time actually can go backwards, right? Where change can be reversed, and that's part of the puzzle solving. If you only think in time in one direction, you're not going to get through the game, right? You have to keep track of everything and then re ask yourself, okay, in reverse, you know, if I rewind, am I opening up more options? Um, an interesting thing to do. Um, I'm sh I hope people are familiar with Super Hot, right? So again, this would be a theme of like, wait, what if I can turn time into this tiny, like almost discrete, the minutest pockets or units possible, um, and then, or, or immediately expand it to um, you know, larger like, expanses of time in order to make my actions meaningful and fun and interesting. Right? So the gimmick of this game is, yeah, right? It, you move and time moves with you. If you don't move, time stops. And then it allows you for that very fluid um, experience of planning your actions and then taking them. Um, and then finally, you know, when you think about time, um, I don't know if you're familiar with this game, it's called Before Your Eyes. It's actually just a story and the way that, oh, sorry for a person's life, and the way that you interact is you, you need either a camera, minimally, or VR goggles, and they detect whether you blink. If your eyes are open, the story progresses and you get to see a scene. And the moment you blink, the story is gone, and then you move on to the next chapter. Right? So here, time is completely disrupted. You know, to talk about whether you're moving in a linear fashion doesn't make sense anymore. Right? And funnily enough, it's you know, the pockets of time that you experience that gives you the story in this game. Right? So I hope this uh, set of examples um, um, does open up how we think about time and how it is expressed in the games that you know, we create later on. Um, of course, same thing with um, space, right? Um, it might seem trivial. Um, the obvious route that so many um, epic games want to do is I want to expand space such that you don't feel confined to a room, a house, a city, a country, a planet. Just go, go, go. Right? Sure. That's pretty um, uh, direct. But of course, we've had so many classic examples where it's about disorienting your sense of space making people actually feel like, wait, I don't understand what's in front of me or behind me or left or right or up or down anymore. Oh, wow, like, you know, it, it's a, uh, again so um, expansive when you get to experience space in a non-human way. Right? Um, and of course, uh, very much uh, 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 an alternative route would be to look at how do I help people redefine their association with everyday space. Right? Um, what can I do with objects? How do they react to me? Uh, what scale do I want to operate in? How does that change my, f my sense of space itself? Right? What I am in it, how I act in it. Right. Uh, this game, uh, I kata <laughs> market. Yeah, it's about you rolling around, picking up everyday objects, and um, the you know the, the bigger your blob of, type of objects is, the more objects you get to pick up, and then people expand and say, oh, I only started with this tiny little teaspoon, and now I get to aim and eventually maybe pick up that entire chair, desk, car. Who knows? <laughs> I never played the game, <laughs> but um, yeah, right. So again, uh, reorienting how we think about space. Uh, now, I think this one for me is my favorite way to think about what video games can do because. Uh, my heart is very much in narrative, storytelling, meaning, um, meaningful experiences. Um, I'm borrowing this from a game designer. Uh, her name is uh, Marta Fire. Um, and um, uh, after watching a lecture, I just, I'm, I'm just stealing it, wholesale. Um, and hopefully, do justice in presenting it to you. So we, let's imagine we have a chart, right? And um, the horizontal x-axis is about how much um, the mechanics, what you do in a game, determines how the story flows, right? So towards the left, 
whatever you do in the game doesn't really change the story so much, right? It just gets you from one set to next. And towards the far end, you're gonna have games where the mechanics influence pretty much everything about how the game plays out. And from um, the y-axis, you know, at the bottom, um, how many routes are available to you, um, and of course at the top, it becomes so, you know, sandboxy and open world. And so now let's just kind of categorize familiar titles and then maybe it'd be easy to map um, um, how they can be generated. Okay, so you notice the first one I chose obviously is Uncharted, right? Those of you familiar with the game, um, it's, it's kind of like a, a sing and train, <laughs> right? It, the story is already laid out, it's already mapped out all the way. Um, the story beats, the dramatic action, what the characters are, who they are, how they act, it's already there. Um, and all you do as a player is just like, you know, moment to moment, like, fight, 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 scene, fight, fight, scene. So really it's like a movie, isn't it? Right? It's a movie cut up with moments where you just have to do something to get to the next scene. Now, maybe if we shift it a little bit, we do see a potential where the mechanics uh, might be influential into the experience itself. So personally, personally, this is just me, for me, Uncharted was a disappointing experience because I didn't know what shooting had to do with being a global thief that was on an escapade and adventure. Why do I need to kill so many people? Right? It, 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 that was a disconnect for me. Uh, whereas Last of Us, maybe I can argue like, okay, no, 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 it's, it's claustrophobic, it's scary, I, I don't know where to go, I don't know if I have any friends, and you know, it's just so hard to get even from one building to another building. Okay, maybe that adds to the mood and atmosphere. I, I could argue that. So, you know, I, I think that's... Um, um, hopefully illustrative of how mechanics can play a role. Now, if we go up to the top left quadrant where it's more like, you know, um, the story routes a little bit more spread out, then maybe, yeah, we get something like The Witcher, right? Multiple endings, multiple uh, arcs for characters, some characters die, some characters live, who do you want to live and die, blah, 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 right? Um, but the mechanics don't really matter. I could be a swordsman, I would still get the same story. I could be a sorcerer, I still get the same range of stories, right? Um, maybe something a little bit better would be Skyrim. So Skyrim, if you choose a class, you start with a certain story that other classes technically don't get to experience. So maybe that's a little bit moving along the needle of how you play determines what story you experience. Um, towards the right, I think, are where we get to what's more useful for us. Um, okay, so, right? Now, here, in this quadrant, the way Martha tries to think about it is we enter sandbox territory. All I'm really doing is giving you the equipment. You, your actions, your, your intentions, you are the story, right? So maybe this is a little bit limited because all you are is just, I want to create mayhem in whatever imaginative way I can come up with, right? But it's still mayhem, right? But, you know, <laughs> what's the story? It's me, as a goose, <laughs> finding out to ruin a person's day, right? Um, Minecraft, of course, right? Par excellence, right? I give you the building blocks and suddenly people are creating Minecraft versions of a computer. <laughs> like, so meta. <laughs> and you can't determine it, right? It's, it's, it's the activity of the players creating narratives that you couldn't plan for yourself. And in the bottom right um, are my... Like, um, oh, where if I could focus my energies, I would focus my energies here on the bottom right. Um, Frostpunk is uh, Marta Fayette's game, right? What she wanted to do is she wanted to create an experience where even though the story and the narrative is kind of straightforward, your actions in it are so determinative of what the meaning of the game was for you. Um, again, um, it's, uh, uh, the setting is it's uh, apocalypse, um, the world is ending, you need to keep people alive, and you have to make super horrible, painful decisions like, do I put in sawdust to make enough bread so that people can just live, even though I'm poisoning them, <laughs> you know? Um, there's this one, one subpopulation of people who are dying from a disease. If I sequester them, they'll die faster. <laughs> but at least the rest of the people, you know, get to live. And she keeps on giving these tough, 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 tough choices. And that is the meaning that you derive from your experience of playing the game. Who am I as a person? Well, what do I think? Well, I mean, how, okay, like, how do I want to break my heart? Like? There's many different ways I can break my heart, but I get to choose which way. Okay. And, you know, there are other various games like that. Um, I think before, before you guys have talked about it as well. So it's just, um, in this schema, I hope you can find the right combination for you. 
on what it means to create a mechanic, what is meant to serve, um, and how does it, uh, yeah, right, <laughs> um, define the experience. Um, running out of time, so I think I'll just uh, skip through this. Uh, basically, what I verbally just said. Um, if I were to just, uh, you know, um, summarize it as just questions, core questions to ask, it'd be something like this. Right, so if I'm role playing like a witcher, do the mechanics help me bring the fantasy to life? Do I really feel like this adventurous witcher determining the outcome of the story? Uh, movie watching, are the mechanics smooth to make me feel good as I go from scene to scene? Do they help me immerse myself in that world or that movie? Um, and uh, generative for sandbox, is the toolkit um, uh, robust enough such that people really do get a wide range of expressions um, and that, that's what makes it fun? And finally, last one is, um, are the mechanics doing the bulk of the storytelling? Right? Almost to the point where it's, it's doing the actions and the activities that um, um, you get yeah, um, what the point of the game is about. Um, last bit, um, I'll kind of apply uh, all of the concepts to this game uh, that I definitely uh, love the bits <laughs> and will always come back to. Um, it was also made in a game jam, so we can take inspiration from it. Um, it's called Behind Every Great One, and it's a very simple story. You have a house, you play a housewife, and your job is to do chores. So you go to room to room, and you have options. You can clean up the dirt on the floor, you can clean the toilet, there are a bookshelf, you can read books, there's an outdoor patio where you can have a cigarette, you can, take, you can take some me time, right, as you do your chores. Your husband is a famous painter, and doesn't have time for any of the chores. That's why you have to do it. Okay? And at the end of every day, he's going to have a recap of how you performed in your job as a housewife. So, <laughs> so, you can see you're going room, 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 and you clean, 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 and then maybe at the end of the day, your husband will be like, oh, you clean the kitchen, it's so clean. Oh, it's like, I, I, I love how, what you do. Oh, I'm sure it me, but you forgot to clean the toilet. You know, I saw a stain there. No, 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 no. The mechanic tells the story because in one day, you do not have enough time to do everything that needs to be done. Right? So that's one very key thing. The theme comes up from there. What's it like to be unappreciated and taken for granted <laughs> as a partner? Right? And it's so beautiful how it comes out because midway through, the in-laws come in and that changed my mood entirely and my actions told the story. I gave up. I'm just going to read a book. Oh, is it mother-in-law? You're not happy with me? Ah? Oh, okay. I go out to smoke. Mother-in-law comes up. Hey, you know, I don't want you smoking around my son, alright? Okay. I literally just took the cigarette. <laughs> the meaning came out from the action. I, I reacted because now I'm dead at myself and know what is it like to toil and have people just still, you know, put you down and grind you down. And it didn't need scenes, cut scenes. It didn't need dialogue, or it's just mechanics. It's just what I did that came up with this meaningful experience. All right, so um, I think I'm pretty much out of time. I wish I could uh, squeeze in something um, more. Uh, um, if you guys are interested, uh, I would love to talk about the game that we're currently working on and um, how we use uh, the various concepts I talked about in informing um, the design of our game. Um, and I was told by my partner that I have to have to have to do this. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> um, we are very much looking forward to, uh, you know, uh, get in touch with collaborators and engineers. So anyone here, Loba, uh, who <laughs> thinks that they, you know, would um, have an interest in making the kind of games that I've been describing, um, uh, the passion that uh, we have in terms of uh, game design, um, please reach out to us. Uh, we like to get to know people. Anyway, thanks. Yes. Uh, wait, what? give us an elevator pitch on Commonwealth. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, um, elevator pitch. All right, so the current game we're working on is uh, called Commonwealth. Um, all right. <laughs> I should be doing this much better by now, really. Okay, but I, I want to try and do it in terms of the, the concepts, right, that we've uh, just been talking about. All right, so uh, Commonwealth is a, a game where we start with a prompt. What if um, ethical decisions were the currency of a city builder. That was our initial prompt. 
Right, so usually city builders is like, I collect resources, money, cash, whatever it is, I build my buildings. But what if it's now, no, 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 it's tough, painful decisions. So I'm, yes, again, that's why I love Martha Fire, right? It's like, um, uh, what if it's at making the ethical decisions that determines what you get to build? So there's an initial problem. Right, so the setting is um, kind of like a, a, a fictional version of Singapore <laughs> back in the 1960s, where uh, the British have left, we have a government, we had this island, what are we going to do with it? <laughs> We've got no resources, um, and so all we have to do left is we try to reshape the entire island, and hopefully we um, make resources out of our people, right? Um, and so when we thought about um, the setting or uh, why this fit, it was really also a way to think about, um, especially close to home, right? For us as Singaporeans, we think about like cultural roots where they come from, how the government's policies affected all these things. Um, and that's why we knew, yeah, it's, it's got to be about us, right? Like, I couldn't set it you know, in a different country in a different time. Um, what are the mechanics? So the mechanics are uh, very much papers, please. So this is where we get a genre, right? What's in a mishmash of? So papers, please, uh, plus maybe something like um, um, uh, frost punk or something like that, right? Um, and the mechanics is this. Um, cycle of going through documents, gathering information about all these landowners, because they are the ones coming in to you and saying, don't take my land. Or if you really want to take my land, pay me enough money. Mm -hmm. Right? And you have to suss out which of these people are legitimate owners. Are they giving you fake documents? Two, even if they are giving you fake documents, maybe they have a real soft story. Maybe it's a single mother who has five children. <laughs> All she's been doing is a house cleaner. Do you really want to take a home for nothing? Don't give her anything left. So we want to present all of these uh, constellation of elements that inform your decision uh, to make an ethical action. As you decide, does this person deserve to keep their home? Yes or no. Does this person deserve money? Yes or no. Does this person deserve extra help from you? Yes or no. Um, yeah. So finally, I think just to round up, um, uh, we, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, we're thinking about um, um, other concepts that I've introduced. Uh, things like, um, sorry, this is the ethical bit, right? Um, you know, space and time. Um, maybe uh, if I were to simplify it, I'd be thinking about how um, simple actions in a tiny little sphere within the government office. Uh, how do I express the impact on a larger scale in some way? Um, if I'm thinking about time, same thing. I'm asking myself, uh, how do I prepare an arc, right? Such that when you look at the initial actions that you take in an earlier era, how do they play out? How do you reflect on them later on? Um, and that's how I would have approached like uh, making time meaningful. Um, yeah. All right. So anyway, yes. This is the last slide. Hey, when can we try your game? <laughs> uh, <laughs> good question. In the future. Time is not linear. <laughs> it's destructive. Before your eyes, yeah, yeah, before you know it, you'll get there. Uh, I saw but you yeah. have the demo link, right? Will you be able to send us that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, So, yeah, for sure. I'll uh, be happy to uh, yeah. share the demo and any sort of feedback uh, we can get much appreciated. But yeah. anyway, yes. Ooh. All right. Yeah. Okay, yes, uh, we have one question. And you likewise, do? Yes, oh. if you have additional questions, hold on to a post it, pass it to Jeremy later. Alright? Okay, one question. I have a question. Alright. Um, oh, I really enjoyed your talk and I uh, feel pretty inspired by all the examples you're listing. I was wondering, like, you personally, um, as a designer, uh, what was kind of like your journey like and, and how, how your design philosophy kind of like changed since you started until now. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have a different so question? Like, all the examples you're using, like, like what, know, what, what was your first game you played? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, I guess if I were to try to derive meaning from my journey, um, I hope that it inspires people to think from outside the box because I didn't start as a game designer. I started off as a teacher of philosophy, right? So um, I, it's way out there. <laughs> Right? Um, teaching logic, critical reasoning, and everything to students. Um, and eventually I got roped in with a good friend who was the founder of Lambda Mew, and he started getting me into writing for their previous game for Pixel People. 
um, and designing characters, designing worlds, blah, blah, blah. Um, so if you ask me what my journey was, uh, when he finally gave me the ropes, I decided I, I can't, that's what I know. I know philosophy, I know difficult questions, I know what it means to present a puzzle that isn't simply, not that I have anything against puzzles, puzzles that isn't simply about logic, but about engagement, right? Um, you know, ethical, emotional engagement. Um, and so, from there, then I came back into uh, the skill set of what my uh, team had, um, coming from uh, pixel people, city building, blah, blah, blah design. Blah, blah. So, in a very real way, I guess it's, uh, it's, it's finding what I knew I could do well and asking myself how do I fit that within the world of video games in a way that allows me to push what a video game could be a little bit out of the norm <laughs> um, and, and that's where I understood if I was going to contribute anything to the industry or to the team it would have to be that and, and not just simply try to <coughs> fit in <laughs> um, uh, purely um, without bringing something fresh to the table uh, so I hope that answers yes. your question <laughs> Don't be afraid not to fit in.